Hey everyone, Movie Sensei here. Today I am going to explain an action adventure comedy film called Jumanji. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A long time ago in a town called Brantford, two brothers, Benjamin and Caleb Sproul, had something creepy in a chest that they wanted to get rid of. So, they buried the chest deep in the forest, hoping nobody would find it. The brothers were really scared of what was inside, so they rushed back to town. Now fast forward a hundred years to the same town. We meet a 12-year-old boy named Alan Parrish. Alan is having a tough day. He's being chased by bullies led by a boy named Billy Jessup. To escape, Alan runs to his dad's shoe factory. There he meets Carl Bentley, a friend of his dad's and an employee at the factory. Carl is super excited about a new sneaker he created and hopes Alan's dad will be impressed. However, things take a bad turn when Alan accidentally breaks a machine with Carl's sneaker prototype. Carl, being a good friend, takes the blame and ends up losing his job. Alan, already feeling upset because his dad doesn't seem to believe in him, tries to talk to the bullies outside the factory. Unfortunately, the bullies not only beat him up but also steal his bike. Alan, intrigued by the mysterious tribal drum beats, is drawn to a construction site near the factory where executive offices are being built. The captivating sounds guide him to a wall of mud. Undeterred, he starts digging and discovers the same chest that his ancestors buried a century ago. To his amazement, the chest contains an elaborate jungle adventure board game called Jumanji. Wanting to keep the discovery to himself, he hastily takes the game home to the parish mansion. Despite his excitement, Alan's focus shifts when his mom, Carol, finds him beaten up from the encounter with Billy's gang. Later that night, Sam and Carol, Alan's parents, are about to leave him at home as they attend a party where Sam is the guest of honor. Trying to make amends for leaving Alan to face the bullies alone, they reveal their plans to enroll him in the prestigious Cliffside School for Boys. This revelation sparks a heated argument between Alan and Sam. Unhappy with the decision, Alan, feeling misunderstood and frustrated, decides to run away from home. However, before Alan can make his escape, his friend Sarah Whittle unexpectedly appears at the front door. She explains that she told Billy to stop harassing Alan for hanging out with her. The reunion is cut short as the drumbeats begin to echo again. Intrigued, they decide to investigate, heading back inside to take a closer look at Jumanji. Alan suggests they play the game, but Sarah is uninterested and tosses the dice back onto the board. To their surprise, the rhinoceros token accepts it as a valid roll, a message appears on the crystal ball, triggering the summoning of shrieking bats into the fireplace. Alan begins putting the game away, causing him to drop the dice. The elephant token starts moving along its own path, and the crystal ball instructs Alan to wait in a jungle until a 5 or an 8 is rolled. To their horror, Alan is gradually sucked into the game's central ball. The commotion attracts the swarm of bats released by the game, and they fly out of the fireplace, attacking Sarah and chasing her out of the house. 26 years later, Shepard lose their parents in a car crash. Left orphaned, they, along with their Aunt Nora Shepard, decide to move into the long, empty parish mansion. Their plan is to transform the mansion into a bed and breakfast hotel. As the family settles into the grand but vacant mansion, eerie occurrences begin to disturb their peace. The three of them are startled by the sudden appearance of bats, prompting them to call in pest control to investigate. However, the exterminator finds nothing unusual and, in the process, reveals the unsettled story of Alan Parrish's disappearance. Complicating matters, the relationships and attitudes among Judy, Peter, and Nora become strained. Judy resorts to telling lies, and Peter adopts a shyness that causes him to only speak to Judy. Unbeknownst to them, the siblings start hearing the same mysterious drum beats from the attic. A few days later, Judy and Peter hear drumming sounds from the attic just before school. They go upstairs and find an old board game called Jumanji. They decide to play it in the attic. Judy reads the rules, and Peter takes out the game tokens. However, the rhino and elephant tokens won't move. When Judy rolls the dice first, the crocodile token moves and sends a message on a crystal ball about a consequence. Suddenly, three giant mosquitoes appear and attack them. Excited by the game, Peter rolls the dice against Judy's advice. His monkey token causes a gang of monkeys to have a playful party in the kitchen. As Judy reads more instructions, the monkey gang leaves the house, going in different directions. They realize that the consequences from the game will disappear when it ends. Peter rolls again, because he got doubles and lands on a five, releasing an intimidating lion. The lion chases them downstairs, but luckily, Peter also frees an adult named Alan from Jumanji. Alan locks the lion in the master bedroom, finally bringing some relief. Overwhelmed with happiness at being free and back in Brantford, 
Alan's joy takes a sharp turn when Judy shares the heartbreaking news about his parents' absence. Alan sets out to find his parents. On his way, he encounters Officer Carl Bentley, now a police officer, who doesn't recognize him. Alan calculates that he has spent 26 years in Jumanji, shocked by the revelation that it's now 1995. Their reunion is short-lived, as mischievous monkeys steal Officer Carl's police cruiser, forcing him to leave. Alan, guided by his instincts, heads to the once-thriving shoe factory. To his dismay, he discovers that Brantford has fallen into poverty. Inside the abandoned factory, a homeless man reveals that Sam, Alan's father, gave up on everything and abandoned the business after the unsuccessful search for his son. Visiting his parents' graves, Alan learns the heartbreaking truth about their fate. Judy urges Alan to return to the mansion and help them finish the game. However, their plans are interrupted by a car crash, and they overhear medics talking about an outbreak of seizures caused by unknown bites. Jumping to conclusions, Alan and the kids manage to escape a mosquito attack just in time. The persistent insect forces them into an improvised drive back home. Returning to the old parish mansion, Judy and Peter try to convince Alan to join them in completing the game, but Alan remains reluctant. Using a bit of reverse psychology learned from his dad, Peter persuades Alan to at least watch their progress. Only when Jumanji refuses Judy's role does Alan realize they're continuing the same game he started in 1969 understanding that he must play to end the consequences. Alan also remembers they need Sarah's dice rolls. They discover Sarah, living in the same house since childhood, now a psychic who changed her name and isolated herself after the trauma of Alan's disappearance. Bringing Sarah back to the parish mansion, they find her frightened at the sight of Jumanji again. Reluctant due to the ruined life from her last game, Sarah is unwilling to join. Alan, realizing they need her turns, tricks her into dropping the dice. Using her turn, they witness the consequences unfold rapidly. Fast-growing Jumanji vegetation takes over the living room, including purple flowers armed with lethal barbs dipped in poison. Vines transform into trapping pods, one of which snags Peter, attempting to drag him into its colorful jaws. Alan, quick on his feet, hacks the vine with the heirloom saber of his war hero ancestor, saving Peter from the perilous grip. In the library, the four players forge a strong bond to finish playing Jumanji, and undo the damages it has brought to Brantford and their lives. However, Alan's next turn brings out someone unsettling, a big game hunter named Van Pelt. This ominous figure is hell-bent on hunting and killing Alan, driven by an unexplained rivalry that seems to have originated when Alan first entered the game. Van Pelt's pursuit leads them outside. He opens fire, and even Officer Carl becomes a target when he tries to intervene. Van Pelt, running out of ammunition, reluctantly leaves to replenish his firepower, intensifying the danger lurking in the game. Back in the library, tensions rise as Sarah and Alan engage in a heated argument. Sarah reveals the heavy toll the trauma of being the sole witness to the real reason for Alan's disappearance took on her life and reputation. Judy rolls the dice to break the tension among the adults. However, the consequences turn out to be an overwhelming stampede of jungle animals tearing through the house. Amidst the chaos, a lone pelican mistakes Jumanji for a fish and flies away with the game. Tracking the pelican to the river, they discover it unwilling to give up the game. Alan, using his resourcefulness, bribes the bird with a real fish, convincing it to cast Jumanji aside. Before Jumanji slips over a waterfall, Peter manages to catch the game. However, Alan, having a different perspective, feels uneasy about it. As they grapple with this unexpected development, they encounter Carl once again. This time, Alan is taken in for questioning. Sensing Van Pelt's looming presence, Alan willingly goes along with Carl's arrest, leaving the others behind. The trio realizes that they cannot finish the game without Alan, and uncertainty about the unfolding events hangs in the air. Meanwhile, Peter attempts to cheat by landing a fixed roll to win the game. In response, Jumanji takes a stand against cheating, transforming Peter into a monkey. While Alan is being taken away by Carl, the police officer becomes suspicious about the unexplained madness in town, suspecting a connection to Alan. As he delves deeper, he learns about Sam firing Carl for an incident at the shoe factory. Back in Brantford town, mass hysteria continues to escalate due to the consequences unleashed by Jumanji. In the midst of the stampede, Peter, Sarah, and Judy lose the game to Van Pelt. Determined to retrieve Jumanji, they follow the hunter to a local discount department store. However, Van Pelt, anticipating their move, 
scares off witnesses with gunfire. The trio manages to retrieve the game and evade Van Pelt temporarily through quick thinking. However, their escape is short-lived as Van Pelt corners them with a collapse of stacked up tires. Just as the situation reaches a critical point, Alan and Carl arrive at the store, burying Van Pelt under an avalanche of fallen paint pots. On the way home, Alan is disappointed by Peter's attempt to cheat and scolds him for crying. However, reflecting on his stern parenting style, Alan realizes he needs to make amends. He reassures Peter, promising that they will win the game and return him to being a real boy. Back at the mansion, now overwhelmed by Jumanji vegetation, Sarah takes her next turn. A sudden monsoon erupts from inside the house, flooding it and summoning two crocodiles that pose a threat to the group. The chaotic situation only begins to subside when Carl and Nora finally arrive at the front door. Unintentionally, their entry drains the flood outside, taking the crocodiles with it. Upstairs in the attic, Alan makes his next turn and the floor transforms into quicksand, sucking him in. Sarah, attempting to prevent Alan from sinking, also gets trapped. Judy rolls her turn, freezing the quicksand and creating a tense standstill. As Peter takes his next turn, a group of large spiders emerges from the back of the attic, advancing on Alan and Sarah. Stuck and unable to flee, the kids must confront the spiders. Peter rushes to get an axe to fend them off, However, Judy is shot by a poisonous barb from a purple flower. Nora arrives at the house and discovers Judy and Peter. Terrified by the lion in the master bedroom, Alan's legs seemingly on the ceiling and Peter's transformed appearance, Nora fails to recognize her nephew. In a frantic move, Peter locks her in a closet. Before the spiders can harm the trapped adults, Sarah's last roll unleashes an earthquake. The arachnids scatter and the entire house splits in two. Freed from the floor, Alan swings through the divided house narrowly avoiding the recently awakened lion. Landing in the living room where the game began, Van Pelt reappears, demanding that Alan drop the dice. Alan seemingly loses one into the Ravena, making it appear impossible to finish the game. Alan refuses Van Pelt's demands and recalls his father's lesson about facing fears. Van Pelt, impressed by Alan's newfound courage, aims his gun in a surprising turn. Alan's last dice roll allows his token to reach the goal, effectively winning the game just in time. Before Van Pelt can take a final shot at Alan and Sarah, the gunshot starts to evaporate, turning into a growing tornado. This tornado engulfs all consequential elements, including Van Pelt, and sucks them back into the board in the form of a whirlwind. Alan and Sarah find themselves back in 1969 as the same children they were before. Although it felt like an eternity to them, only five minutes have passed in the restored reality. Alan wastes no time in reconciling with Sam, offering heartfelt apologies for their past fallout. To his surprise, Sam allows Alan to attend a local school if he wishes and admits that he was the one who damaged the machine. Alan remembers that Judy and Peter are still in the attic. Sarah reminds him that, in 1969, Judy and Peter haven't even been born yet. Later, Alan and Sarah chain up Jumanji and throw it into the river, and Sarah gives Alan a glimpse of his future by sharing her first kiss with him. In a much better adulthood, Alan and Sarah are married and expecting for their first child. Alan has taken over the shoe business from Sam after his retirement, with Carl still dedicated to his work as the plant supervisor in the factory. During the Christmas party at the parish mansion, Alan and Sarah have a heartwarming reunion with Judy and Peter, 